And, and what's really went. interesting is, is some of the, the newer generation drugs that we're just about to talk to, we're starting to realize that some of these Im immune properties are less common in these in these drugs. And, and, I, and I wonder if this is actually a good segue, Jen, if we could kind of flip to the, the next um, drug and get your thoughts on um, Stellara Ustekinibab. Absolutely. And so I'll start with Stellara. I know we're, we're running late on time, but uh, so Stellara is also known by its generic name, Ustekinibab. And that was approved for treating moderate to severely active Crohn's and more recently, ulcerative colitis. So just like with the anti-TNF medications, as I said, it's an antibody protein, and it targets a chemical messenger uh, that we call cytokines, called IL-1223. And this particular cytokine has been shown to cause inflammation in inflammatory bowel disease. And it's been really, it's been shown in well-designed, randomized controlled trials to be efficacious for inducing and maintaining remission in Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So Stellara is initially dosed. I noted in the um, survey response that there are only about 8% of attendees that were on Stellara. So I, I, this may be uh, useful information to, to some of you who are on the conference that are not on it. Um, it's dosed as a single initial IV uh, induction dose uh, based on your weight at first, and then it's provided as a subcutaneous dose after that. And that can be done at your home by yourself or a family member if you're comfortable with that. So it's, it's, it can be convenient for that reason. Um, the maintenance dose is typically given every eight weeks, but sometimes that interval is narrow to every four weeks, depending on how you respond to that medication. And your healthcare provider will, will, together with you, assess your symptoms and try to determine whether or not that's needed. Um, Stellara itself has been uh, demonstrated to be quite safe. And really, there have been, to date, no observed increases in the rates of infections including serious infections in any type of research study uh, to date, uh, either short-term or over the long-term amongst people living with IBD, uh, as well as in another condition, psoriasis. So there have been quite a few studies published, including clinical trials, registry studies, um, and combined summaries of studies that we call pooled analyses or meta-analyses, um, as well as post-marketing surveillance, so after the drug is released to market, uh, adverse events are reported, and that is monitored um, uh, very carefully. So as you've heard from our other panelists, if you were to get, we, we, we really don't know and have very little information about uh, the risk that a medication like Stellara could um, in, pose to you in terms of acquiring or, or contracting COVID-19. If you were to get COVID-19, um, also the potential risks or benefits of being on a drug like Stellara are still, still uncertain. Um, the amount of data is growing, as you've heard before, but the overall numbers are still relatively low, and a fair amount of uncertainty still exists. So having said that, to date there have been no observed increases in the risk of adverse outcomes amongst people with IBD on Stellara, and specifically uh, the secure database that Gail and Eric have been speaking about has not shown any major difference. But this is, this is early days, relatively small numbers and unpublished data, but very reassuring for sure. And so for this reason, it's, it's very important that more research is carried out in order to better understand the true risk or lack thereof uh, in association uh, with uh, Stellara use. And certainly for me as a gastroenterologist, um, I'm providing care to a large number of, of patients with IBD during the pandemic. And I, I think in scenarios when a patient needs to be started on a new biologic, as I alluded to earlier, Stellara is a very attractive option given its known relative safety and ease of administration that being, being subcutaneously, and it also has been shown to have low rates of anti-drug antibody formation or this immunogenicity phenomenon that um, I mentioned a few minutes ago. So, uh, so that sums it up, I think, for, for Stellara. Yeah, no, it's, it's excellent. And I remember um, some of the first use of Stellara was um, with anti-TNF therapies like Remicade and Humira, some of our patients can actually develop psoriasis um, with their with their disease as a result of, of the drugs and some of my early uses of it was when it was designed as a drug for psoriasis before it was even approved for Crohn's disease and just recently for ulcerative colitis um, that we were, were using it for psoriasis and so uh, it's one that kind of has a potential effect for different immune mediated diseases um, and uh, and then and then like you said it's one where you give an IV induction and then every eight weeks a self injection and so you get a, a, a good option in this in this scenario and and as you described in the secure registry we're, we're not seeing major signals of, of huge concerns with with Stellara. 